Good evening to all of you. You're watching Lok Sabha TV. I'm Anurag Puneta with you. Today we will talk about uh, India's External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj's visit to Maldives. As we all know that the India's relations with the Maldives have been frayed for quite some time uh, since uh, uh, the new government uh, took charge in Mali and President Saleh gave hints that his country would be sensitive towards India's security and strategic concern. Now India's External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj has gone to Mal Maldives uh, uh, on a two-day visit and this is a first full-fledged bilateral trip from India to Maldives after the government of President Saleh um, came into power in November last year. Both countries signed one agreement and two memorandum of understanding including collaboration uh, in the field of energy efficiency and renewable energy. India and Maldives also signed an agreement on the exemption from visa requirement for holders of the diplomatic and official passports, while the MOU's exchange focus on Indian grant assistance for implementation of high-impact community. Last year in November, Prime Minister Modi uh, had visited Maldives to attend Saleh's swearing ceremony. Saleh also came to India in December last year, during which India announced uh, $1.4 billion US dollar financial assistance to Maldives. As we know, the relation between New Delhi and Mali deteriorated since 2013 when the Nasheed, the first democratically elected president, was deposed by force and Abdullah Yamin became president in a highly controversial and dubious election. Since then, Maldives increasingly cozied up to China at the expense of India. During Yamin's presidency, Maldives has leased out uh, several islands to China, which India had doubts uh, could be used for a building basis for the part of the string of the pearls uh, strategy to encircle India. Yamin also asked uh, that point of time India quite rudely to take back two of the helicopters it had gifted to the Maldives. He also cancelled the contracts of the Indian companies as well. But now that the two countries have agreed to remain mindful of each other's concern and aspirations uh, uh, for the stability of the Indian Ocean region and not allow their respective territories to be used for any activity inimical to their interests. So we're going to discuss about uh, this trip and the uh, impact of this um, trip and especially everything is fine now between India and Maldives or not. In this edition of Public Forum with two guests. And joining me for the discussion, Smita Sharma, senior journalist. Uh, Smita is with, uh, uh, at the moment, the TV9, Bharat Verse as the executive editor. Very warm welcome to the show, Smita. My second guest is uh, Ms. Namrata Hasija, uh, research associate, CCAS. Very warm welcome to the show, Namrata, as well. We'll be starting with you, Smita. Uh, well, what's your first reaction that uh, now, can we say that the relation between the two countries are now back on the track? Because we have seen a lot of, uh, what you call, animosity in the bad blood. Uh, since last time when Soli came into the power? Well, clearly, I think now what you're looking at is a phase where the two countries and the two governments are trying to not just stabilize what had been a sketchy relationship, particularly in the last two years, between 2016 to 2018, mm -hmm. uh, but also build up and consolidate on the gains as of now. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sushma Swaraj's visit, in a way, was the perfect occasion to look back upon and discuss the, prop the proposals that had been made, not just when Prime Minister Narendra Modi went in for the swearing-in ceremony of Ibrahim Soleh, who mm -hmm. remember, was the joint opposition candidate that took on President Yamin, Yamin. who lost his, uh, you know, who lost the elections mm. in a pleasant surprise mm. for South Block for New Delhi. Mm. Uh, but also when uh, President Soli chose to come to India uh, as his first, uh, in fact, overseas visit, mm. it sent out an important signal mm. of the kind of recalibration of ties that was happening. Mm. Uh, with Sushma Swaraj, uh, you know, the fact that uh, after she landed for the visit, mm -hmm. uh, the Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Ravish Kumar in a tweet wrote that it's a feeling of being at home. So India Maldives, uh, which have had close, uh, not just security, but traditional ties, mm -hmm. even in terms of the communities, the linkages, uh, it's trying to look forward, at least in terms of the neighborhood story. Mm -hmm. If you've had, you know, the stories in uh, from, of course, Pakistan has been the perpetual troublemaker, but uh, Bangladesh has just gone through recent elections where Sheikh Hasina came back to back power. power. Uh, uh, Nepal, we have seen that constant China shadow dominating ties. So in South Asia, to have a Soli back into position in Maldives, and that country also now faces parliamentary elections mm -hmm. on 6th of April. Mm -hmm. So the external affairs minister's visit came ahead of the parliamentary elections. Mm -hmm. uh, what will be important is to see that internally, the coalition that was formed uh, to come into government under mm -hmm. Ibrahim Soli, who mm -hmm. happens to be 
to be in fact a relative of President Nasheed as well, yeah, the former yeah. president. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if they are able to ensure that the trucking of the alliance continues, mm -hmm. that the coalition is stable, uh, it will perhaps for the time being and for some months to come remain a good story as far as the India neighborhood is concerned. Okay, Anki, trucking up the relations, I mean, the, whatever the relation we had uh, with the Maldives, what's your understanding that now the relations are back on track and seeing the kind of uh, animosity that happened uh, at the time of Yami's tenure? Uh, see, I think uh, we uh, always have to look at India-Maldives uh, relationship the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. And we also have to remember that in 1988, when you know the Tamil nationalists were about to you know make it as a base, uh, Indians actually sent 1,600 troops to mm -hmm. you know to Operation help uh, Maldives. Mm -hmm. So it has not only been an economic relation, a cultural relation, but we also always had security um, as an as a main uh, you know issue with uh, always with the you know Maldives. We always had that kind of a relationship, mm -hmm. but that relationship, as um, Smita has already pointed out. Mm -hmm came into question in the last two years. Mm. And especially uh, when in 2015, um, the Maldives uh, constitution was amended and you know any foreign country could buy land in Maldives. Yeah. That amendment was introduced by the former president. Mm. And immediately China bought an island. island. And that island, if you see, is 75 nautical miles mm. from India's exclusive economic zone. Yeah, yeah. And if they you know, set up a radar there, our whole western coast is going to come under under, 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 the, under the surveillance. surveillance. So these were the issues that we were. These were the major issues that we were, you know, were having. And Indian company GMR was also given out, the contract. Yeah, it, mm. the, it was not given the contract. Mm. In fact, uh, a Chinese company was given uh, the international airports lease for mm. 50 years. Mm. So for four billion dollars, Dollar. something, yeah. Mm. So these were the things that were happening, mm. and India's India had serious concerns because if you see, uh, Gwadar port, China is already in the Indian Ocean, yeah, yeah. and here, especially when the crisis happened, mm. uh, in China gave an open warning that this time, if India sent troops like 1988, mm. it won't be one-sided. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that, that, these that, were the security concerns that mm. India had, mm. and. Uh, the surprise election of the current president mm. has, I think, um, because I think we should not hype it a bit in the mm. sense that what is happening between India and Maldives now, because we've had an excellent relationship. Mm. I would say there were a little hiccups mm. in the last two years, and kind of we are back on track. And if the government remains, this government remains, I think it will continue um, to be a good relationship which we had we already had with them okay. and i think which is very important for india mm. because this is one of the main um, you know uh, reasons why because of the indian ocean the way china is expanding in the indian ocean mm -hmm. i think it is very important for us to have good relations right now with Maldives. And I think it's a good move okay, by you know the PM going for his swearing in ceremony and we are sending high level delegations. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good, you know, uh, policy that India is uh, you know doing okay. it right now. Yeah. But if we look at let's say since last couple of years, especially after the mm -hmm. introduction of the new constitution with the Maldives, the political stability in the Maldives have been very patchy. Yes. And that is the reason that prob probably the relations have been uh, what you call ups and downs between the two countries. Do you think that the stabil political stability is a crucial factor in Maldives? Look, of course it is. I mean, it's a small island nation mm -hmm. uh, in terms of its size, in terms of its population, but it sits very importantly and strategically in the archipelago of the Indian Ocean. That's right. uh, politically, of course, you have, it, it has gone through major ups and downs, you know, mm -hmm. be it through Nasheed, be it through Yamin, mm -hmm. who then clamped down an emergency in February yeah, of uh, yeah, 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And since then, we saw the relationship really sort of go on to a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the international community, uh, mm -hmm. you know, threatening Maldives with sanctions, with sanctions. Uh, whereas India actually followed a wait and watch policy mm -hmm. which played out much more wisely on hindsight mm -hmm. uh, with whatever was happening. Mm -hmm. Look, these shadows are going to be there. I mean, there have been certain reports that mm -hmm. how the former Home Minister Omar mm -hmm. Nasser, mm -hmm. he was actually planning a protest around the time of Sushma Swaraj's visit. That's right, and that's one right. of the issues that he was raising was the issue of the two advanced light helicopters, the ALHS, the Dhruv helicopters, that's right. uh, which has a crew of six pilots, pilots there, which yeah. are stationed in there. Mm -hmm. Remember, these helicopters have been used for a lot of uh, 
uh, you know, disaster relief operations mm -hmm. uh, for because it's an island country. Mm -hmm. And it's actually come in for human relief purposes. Mm -hmm. Now, when Yamin made it a prestige issue, saying that mm -hmm. you take them back, mm -hmm. and uh, in fact, we are looking for a, a donier to, for reconnaissance and for uh, surveillance uh, efforts, mm -hmm. that donier, the talk around the donier aircraft had also been stuck between South Block and between Malay. Okay. But what happened was these protesters were clamped down. They are calling it that it was its refusal to protest, which is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. But it goes on to show the mood of the current government. Obviously, mm -hmm. they are trying to do a fine balancing act. Mm -hmm. Remember, ever since this government has come into place, mm -hmm. the Soli government, mm -hmm. it's not like they have gone out of their way to make absolute you know, remarks against China. What they're trying to do is they're trying to play it very carefully. They are saying, look, the previous government went in and bulldozed a free trade agreement with yeah. China. Mm -hmm in the absence of opposition mm. in the Majlis mm. or the Maldivian mm. Parliament mm. overnight. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are trying to look into all the terms and clauses. We are yet to understand the fine print. Okay. But they're not talking about scrapping of the FTA. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in terms of the Bells and Road Initiative, mm -hmm. they have said that there were agreements that were entered upon by the previous government. Yeah. We are taking a look, we are reviewing. Mm -hmm. What they have assured Sushma Swaraj even during this visit was, look, if there is anything that we think that breaches upon your sovereignty mm -hmm. or impinges upon Indian security, mm -hmm. The sense is that they will put those projects on hold, even if they do not scrap them off so that they do not rub off the Chinese in a wrong way. Because okay. they don't want to be caught between this power tussle, because, you know, when two elephants fight, it's the grass that so gets trampled. So it difficult for Saleh to, I mean, this, to do this tight of walking, I mean, to manage the two, super, two power, I mean, India Look, and China? Look, it's always been a challenge for any of these nations in this area. Okay. You know, it's always been a challenge for governments in Kathmandu to governments in Maldives of okay. how to do it. Mm -hmm. Because... The Yamin government, I think, did cross certain lines in terms of trying to show how pro-Beijing they had become. So, Soli, mm -hmm. of course, you know, if you look at the kind of agreements that India is talking about, mm -hmm. and they have managed to move a little fast since the term of the announcement of that $1.4 billion of assistance. Mm -hmm. uh, the Maldives government has asked India to look into a project where they can build a cricket stadium cricket for them. Stadium, yeah. The visa liberalization that is mm -hmm. happening. The Hula Hule Island, which was actually developed by the Chinese, mm -hmm. that's where the new Indian embassy is now going to be located because India is looking for a bigger space. Okay. And an interesting nugget, which I just got told by somebody that I was meeting in South Block, mm -hmm. um, is that, you know, on the night that there was a dinner hosted for Sushma Swaraj, mm. Abdullah Shahid, the foreign minister, mm. uh, his banquet speech was actually in Hindi. And apparently he used a lot of poetic Hindi saying that Aapko pata hai jab hamare tat ka paani hame lagta hai ki kabhi ja kar aapke tat ko bhi chhuta hai. This was the kind of poetic language. And, and the foreign minister said that I have actually worked on this speech for the past one week, perhaps more than the bilateral agreement that was signed <laughs> upon. <laughs> so they are also trying to show and calm and assure the Indians that look, I know whatever has happened and played through, okay. do not expect us to make knee-jerk reactions or to make very aggressive speeches against the Chinese mm -hmm. but having said that it's clear that for now the priority is going to be New Delhi security concerns okay I mean how do you how do you uh, see this uh, uh, what you call uh, um, uh, change in attitude of uh, Malay's uh, mm. uh, diplomatic uh, policy vis-a-vis -vis China's relation with the, Mal uh, with the Maldives see there like you know Smita said there are two things the initial government was entirely pro Beijing mm. now this government cannot be, see, even India, I am sure India doesn't work the way, you know, other, I mean, China works. I'm sure when um, um, uh, Sushma Suraj actually visited Malay, she didn't have a list of demands mm -hmm. that they wanted, you know, Malay to kind of, you know, abide by it, okay. because that's not how India works. Mm -hmm. So uh, the thing is that India and Malay are trying to improve their relations. But Ma I mean, like any other country, mm -hmm. India cannot India is not demanding that Malay cuts off its ties with China. with China. And I think it's not even logical for them to do that. Mm. Because, th you know, it's always, I mean, you have diplomatic relations with every country. Mm. I think the important point that they mentioned this time was that neither of the countries will let their territory be used against, against. each other. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have to understand. That they are not going to cut off their ties mm. with China, but they are definitely going to, mm. you know, like they said, India first policy. Okay. So they are definitely going to keep India's interest in their mind mm. and they will continue to have their relations with China, but definitely not tilt towards China, but have a balanced relationship. Okay. Be, be it the Belt and Road Initiative, mm. which was going 
like a you know big way in uh, you know uh, Mali. And if you see that almost seventy percent of Mali's foreign debt is owed by the Chinese, by the China. and it's like the interest is twenty percent of its total budget, mm -hmm. Mali's budget. So they have you know the statement also came from uh, uh, President Saleh that you know whatever difference is mm -hmm. of our debt, we'll be very happy if India could help us with okay. that. Okay. So they are trying to balance it out and I think that's the right thing to do also because they've already entered into agreements and as a country, as a sovereign nation, you do not go back on yeah. the you know contracts that you've already signed. But you need to balance them and just not tilt entirely towards China Too but much. kind of balance between India and China and think that's a very sensible thing to do. Okay, but uh, Smita, I mean, in totality, if you look, and if I ask you about uh, what do you, what China's money played a role in countries like Nepal, in Sri Lanka, in Maldives, and somehow can we say that uh, Chinese money took our friends away from us? I mean, the, we we have seen attitude of Mr. Kohli in Nepal, um, Mr. Rajpaksa in uh, in Sri Lanka, and uh, Mr. Yami in, in Maldives. It is the Chinese budget money. Do you think uh, that has vitiated the atmosphere in this part of the uh, land or not? Look, I mean, there are two ways of looking at it. Of course, you know, one is you can cry victim and you can cry foul about it from the Indian perspective. Okay. But you also have to look at it from the point of view of the South Asian neighbors, the smaller countries. If you look at a country like Maldives, you know, which whose economy hasn't diversified, whose economy mm -hmm. is dependent on fisheries, mm -hmm. on tourism, on and tourism. it's a small country. They have to provide for their people. So obviously, they will be looking at countries for assistance in terms of uh, opening oh. up their purses. Okay. The problem with India has been, and this has been a persistent complaint of most of our neighbors, even mm -hmm. in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. where our work, where Indian grant assistance is visible by way of infrastructure projects, mm -hmm. be it their parliament, mm -hmm. uh, the highways, uh, you know, transmission lines. Yeah, yeah. The problem with India has been its slow pace of projects. And that's something that India seriously needs to address. Okay. I mean, even if you look at Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. uh, you have been talking about the multimodal Kaladan project, which is mm -hmm. an ambitious project. Mm -hmm. You've been talking about a trilateral with Thailand that mm -hmm. is supposed to uh, enhanced linkages. Mm -hmm. But all these projects have been f far delayed. They have been far behind their scheduled time. Mm -hmm. uh, in Maldives, I can tell you for sure, having had these discussions over the years, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the bitterness started seeping in, in the Yamin government. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, remember President Yamin had also come to India yeah. in 2015. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the projects that were signed then till 2017, when all the mess started, mm -hmm. there had been no movement per se. And for whatever reason, from the Indian side, they had actually started curtailing visas to Maldivians. That's when they started curtailing the, vi the visas visa to, to Indian Indians. professionals okay. who are employed there as nurses mm -hmm. in management mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. uh, you know management positions. Mm -hmm. So one of the good things from the Sushma Swaraj visit, if you see, is also this tone aggregates uh, agreement mm -hmm. that India has uh, sort of renewed with Maldives for the next three years, starting mm -hmm. April of this year. Uh, because when Namra, uh, when she mentioned about the GMR mess in mm -hmm. 2013 mm -hmm. under the UPA government. Mm -hmm. Uh, which something that was not mentioned officially, but as one of the retaliatory measures, India had then actually stopped supplying the stones, which is of immense importance for construction mm. in that island nation okay. for whatever security purposes they needed. Mm. So, you know, these things are basically trying to assure them that, look, we are not going to hurt you mm. in a way where your people start feeling the pinch. Yeah, so that's yeah. a messaging from India. Mm. But India will surely have to deliver. I mean, Nepal, you know, you have a police academy that you had promised in the 90s. It kept on going on forever without any reason. The delays continued. Finally, the Chinese came in and built in within a year. So it is because of the, I mean, what you So call if the, the Chinese are delivering projects within a slated time yeah. and with the amount of money, mm. you can cry foul as much as you want. Every country will look at its national interest. So the only way to then sort of project your strength is by saying that, look, my financial options are far more sustainable and viable, does mm -hmm. not come with a debt trap. Mm -hmm. So it is safer, mm -hmm. despite the speed of the delivery of the project. Mm -hmm. And B is that we will try and expedite and cut down on our bureaucratic red tapisms to ensure that things move faster. So it's not entirely the money, it's the red tapism that, that is causing the harm. It's money, you know, the money, the political willpower. Of course, China functions in a different way. The way, mm -hmm. I mean, we can't even build roads overnight within a year in our own country. Let's, let's be real, yeah, realistic, let's be realistic about, about it, despite our most well-meaning intentions. Okay, now, what about 
about that I mean the two issues that impinges on India's relation within the Maldives are um, what you call radicalization within the within the Maldivian society I mean that is uh, what you call the creeping anger against uh, non-believers if, if, hmm. if I say so, so because most of the young Maldivians uh, Maldivians go to Pakistan Pakistani madrasas and that come back as a hardened uh, hmm. jihadis or hardened uh, person do you think that how to somehow manage this kind of uh, ideology that is happening uh, in Maldivian society? See, we've already, I think, had agreements with Mali uh, regarding the terrorism. But uh, right now, uh, if you see the data, it's 200 Maldivians that have actually joined ISIS, which if you see in proportion to the population, I think it's Quite one high. of the highest, yeah. you know. Uh, the, but the other thing is also that India has not suffered directly uh, through terrorism via Mali. So that's another thing. But also when President Yamin, he actually, you know, sent messages to uh, Pakistan's PM and all these things are going on. And it's inclination towards China. And then, of course, it's the China, Pakistan, you know, how things were. But terrorism as such has not directly crept into India through Mali, but I'm sure the Maldivian government is worried about it. So uh, right now they are actually, they, were, they had discussed how to deal with terrorism, you know, both, you know, the, both the countries, how they can deal with it. But um, I don't know if right now India is kind of uh, really pressing on this issue or really worried about this issue, because I think there are other issues that they really want to fix before, you know, right now, like just to kind of get the relationship back on track. Mm -hmm. Maybe if the relationship kind of stabilizes for another and the government in Mali stabilizes for another six months, or, a one year, mm -hmm. I think then probably India will kind of work with Mali on this problem because this is actually a big problem. First, why? Because it's a tourist destination. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, the proportion, as I said, is very high of uh, Maldivians actually joining, joining the ISIS young Maldivians or... actually uh, joining ISIS. I think this radicalization is not a problem only in Mali, but I think right across you know many nations many what we nation. are saying uh, seeing that young uh, you know people are getting more radicalized so there are things you know that Mali government has to work within because ultimately it's you know whatever said and done whatever we say about terrorism it's also about the internal conditions of a country why you know the youth is actually you know uh, getting towards it but I think right now India is not kind of probably discussing this issue as much as other issues other that issues. it wants to discuss. Okay, do you buy this argument first and secondly, what do you call the natural ally or the strategic ally? So India may be the strategic ally to the Maldives, but Pakistan seems a natural ally, seeing the kind of the religious proximity and the ideological uh, moorings uh, are there. I, I wouldn't agree with it completely. See, I mean, you know, if you were, look, if you were to look at, of course, it being a Muslim-majority country, mm. being an Islamic country, mm. uh, but uh, if, uh, other than Yamin, who hesitated uh, when, in fact, uh, post the Uri strikes, uh, India led the boycott of Pakistan in the SARC forum uh, and SARC summit, which was to be hosted by Islamabad. It got yeah, derailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maldives was one of the last South Asian partners that finally d agreed to play along. Uh, they, mm -hmm. they were resilient to it. They mm -hmm. didn't want to boycott because mm -hmm. yeah, of yeah, their yeah. affinities. But it can't be same, said, you know, in a generic tone mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And as Namrata said, of course, you know, if you're looking at the numbers, yes, it's 200. Yes, it's higher compared to its own population. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you look at the number of European fighters who had joined the rank of uh, mm -hmm. ISIS, ISIS, they were much higher. Much higher. Mm -hmm. You know, they, 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 they went into triple digits as well. Yeah. It's not just double digits anymore. Uh, and... Uh, in terms of, again, you know, uh, I think while the world talks about Islamist terrorism, mm. one also has to realize that the whole world today is changing in a way. If you look at the Christchurch attacks in yeah. New Zealand, mm. I mean, it's a white male Christian. Christian, yeah. So if you're talking about Islamist terrorism, the right-wing extremism or a Christian terrorism, most of the cases of terrorism in the US, of the extreme cases of violence that have happened, people have lost lives, mm. that's stemming from right-wing extremism within the United States. But people are so, telling it's, it's happening in a, in a rebound. No, I, I don't think so. Look, if you go back, you know, then it'll be like, oh, because you invaded in colonial times, so I'm it's now okay, invading yeah, you in the, okay. these <laughs> times. We have to accept the harsh realities as the politics around the world today changes, the mm. ideological narratives changes. Mm. With Maldives, one of the 
biggest problems has been while it has a young population mm -hmm. unemployment is a high issue okay. it's an issue that the country deals with mm -hmm. unemployment a lot of people there you know and it's not a joke i mean we tend to joke in the journalist community mm -hmm. but a lot of people actually take to terrorism or to drugs because they don't because have anything my, better to do too. exactly you know what what do they do through the day either you're fishing or you if you don't have a job what do you do so a lot of them actually get brainwashed easily mm -hmm. then through through drugs or through religious radicalization i think what india will be looking at with maldives in the days to come is a kind of inter uh, you know interfaith harmonious dialogue mm. through scholars that's something that's already happening with countries say like indonesia yeah. uh, you know but but i think namrata is right that india is not so much impacted right now by terror which is stemming directly from maldives okay. per se not even in terms of the ones who are signing up for the isis because mm. in india also if you see the national investigation agency which has been looking into all terror related cases mm. they say that the numbers of isis sympathizers might be slightly more Uh, the number of direct ISIS recruits so far in India have been comparatively uh, negligible, negligible, despite our demographic, Graphic, in fact, percentages. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for counterterrorism, in the perspective of dealing with, I think, drugs, counter narcotics, mm -hmm. these are more crucial issues that India needs to deal deal with right now with Maldives, especially given the fact that it's so much important in terms of the shipping lanes that we are looking at through and around Maldives. Okay. So finally, I mean, if we can say that, uh, um, if we say can say that the Maldives is now back on uh, India's good books, and like the both both the countries are now in good books, uh, what India should be doing uh, further um, to enhance the seemingly con congeniality between the two nations that is happening at the moment. I think uh, the high level delegate the visit that we just had I think that's an important step because and uh, what prime minister modi did you know an important step of you know uh, after he had come to actually become the uh, prime minister he had not visited uh, male yeah. uh, you know this was his first visit mm. so and he was the only i think state head in the uh, for the swearing in ceremony so that sends out a message to male that india Uh, you It know gives, gives impo importance, importance to male then male's uh, a newly elected president visiting india and now our uh, foreign minister visiting there so these these are good things that we are doing and this visa issue and all these issues that we are right now you know dealing with all are you know good for them they have asked for more funding for the indira gandhi hospital that they have in mm -hmm. male yeah. so i think and i think that's the positive thing about india even if you see in nepal you know when when i've always visit, visited nepal mm -hmm. you know nepalese you know i mean not saying that few of them would you know like criticize see, the way china built you know quickly they build everything the mm -hmm. kind of projects that they do but india has invested in infrastructure mm -hmm. you know you go to and visit a you know like a market or something right there will be a beautiful monument built by the chinese so everybody looks at that but the kind of investment in and i think that's a very positive thing that even in maldives we have invest we are investing in the hospital we are investing in other things so i think india should keep doing that and mm. building you know a positive uh, you know uh, kind of image in male okay. and we should you know kind of let male balance yeah you know okay. just not ask to tilt towards india but be Balanced. balanced because uh, I, i think you know what's important is one of the scholars recently said that india's status in the region in south asia in particular is one of contested dominance yes. and one of the major reasons for anger or hurt in most of the smaller nations has always been about india's big brother attitude or a big bully everybody. attitude that happens that happens you know it happens with india i mean india complains about it visa vis you in united states so one the i think what i'm trying to say is that regardless of you know in we will have a new government in place post may yeah. uh, it might be the same government that returns to power it could go either way but whoever comes to power one will have to ensure that uh, whatever the government is in male uh, you give them their due sense of importance you give them the due sense of respect without trying to sound like you're patronizing them mm. or bullying them so that they do not feel impinged upon because that people to people connect is important to maintain mm. uh, otherwise there will always be sanctions sections that will try and some sort of you know fish in trouble waters or create okay. Okay. some sort of an anti india rhetoric uh, in some way so it's important to make sure that you are confident enough and as namrata said do not expect male to you know go towards knee jerk reactions vis-a-vis -vis okay. china okay. but be confident about your security terms with them okay on this note we have to wrap up the show thank you very much smita and uh, thank you very much namrata for coming talking to me that's all we have in this issue public forum thank you very much for watching